Hi, I'm Dr. Ratanya Carr. I am a board member of the American Liver Foundation. I'm also the division head of gastroenterology at the University of Washington and a hepatologist. The latest update is that the old name of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, NASH, is no longer. We have a new name, a new nomenclature as we call it, and the new name is metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease or MASLD. And then for people who have more advanced forms of that liver disease, we call it metabolic dysfunction associated steatohepatitis or MASH. So we used to have NASH, now we have MASH. The whole world got together to think about whether the old name of NAFLD and NASH needed to change. We had patients come together through various patient organizations. For example, the American Liver Foundation participated in this process. We had doctors and scientists in many countries around the world coming together over several years, really talking about this challenge of the old name. We tried to answer if we wanted to keep the old name at all. If we didn't wanna keep the old name, what is important about making sure we had in place for the new name? And finally, if we were gonna change the name, what should that name be? Yes, there are posted guidelines. And depending on where you live, you can go to the Liver Society that is uh, in, your, in your region. For us here in the United States, the American Association for the Study of Liver Diseases, or the AASLD, has a number of resources and references to help you understand these various categories. In addition, patient organizations like our own American Liver Foundation, have these resources for you. This name change is really new. It only came about in June. And so you will see a lot of work going on from now and probably going forward for a couple of years from now, really making sure that we provide the most up-to-date information for all of our community members, most especially our patients. The new name does not change how the disease is treated. It does, however, help us do a much better job of figuring out who actually has the disease. And by updating the name and really focusing on metabolism, we now have clear guidance about the patients that we should be looking at and maybe screening for this disease at earlier stages of disease. Through this name change, we are really hoping to avoid using the term fatty liver. That being said, we know that it's going to take time. And so right now, there are individuals who are still using that old terminology, but we're hoping that ultimately we all get on board with the new terminology. One way to talk about this disease, if you don't want to say the whole long name, because it can be challenging, especially for our patients. You might just say that the liver has excessive fat. So instead of saying fatty liver, which we found previously that the term fatty is stigmatizing to some individuals, we can replace it with different language, extra fat in the liver. Metabolic dysfunction essentially means that the normal way that our bodies work to both make energy and use energy is disrupted. And for a given person, that can be due to many things. Some people are born with genetic conditions that make their body not process energy normally. Some people become exposed to things outside of their body, diets, environment, that ultimately lead to them not being able to manage energy normally. And so that's what we mean by metabolism. It's ultimately how our body brings in energy, makes energy, and uses energy. 
and there are many chemicals in the body that circulate around our, our system that help determine one's metabolism. So when we say metabolic dysfunction, it just means that things aren't working quite right with our metabolism. We have for a long time now understood that people who have low thyroid function or hypothyroidism are at risk for this condition. Then we used to call it non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Because we haven't changed the disease or how we are managing this disease, those same risk factors do apply. And in fact, we are looking at new research in the area of targeting how our thyroid hormones work in the liver to potentially treat this disease. It's important for all of you watching to know that we were very thoughtful about any risks our patients might have with this name change, most especially how uh, medications might be covered in the future, even which medications could be uh, looked at for this condition. We were very concerned that changing the name could even slow down the process for research development. We had people from all of these sectors involved in this process, and we heard uh, their, their viewpoints as well. It's also important to know that our various societies are already working with our governments to make sure that the codes are updated so that you will have no problem getting uh, care covered for these conditions. Remember, it is the same disease. We're only changing the name. It became apparent to us that many of our patients were feeling stigmatized by a couple of terms in the old name, fatty and alcoholic, even though there was the non in front of it. The name change was a conversation that ultimately started because we were thinking about how to improve the name so that our patients would not feel stigmatized by the name. In addition, we realized that we now know so much more about this condition that we wanted a name that reflected the biology of the disease. When we first learned about this disease, years and years ago, we, we really didn't know anything. We just knew that it wasn't due to too much drinking of alcohol. But now we know that it really is a disease of metabolism and genetics and environment and all of these things put together. And so coming up with a name that could get rid of some of the, the stigmatizing language and get to the biology was what spurred this initial conversation. So I really want to make sure that when you go to these various websites that you're understanding everything that's on them in terms of how we diagnose this condition. The first thing to just remember is that it's not a new disease, it's the same disease, just a new name. And so if you were previously diagnosed with NAFLD, we would now say that you have MASLD. If you were previously diagnosed with NASH, we would now say that you have MASH. Now there is this new category that you will see also, for people who have a combination of two things. They have mazzled, but they also have excessive consumption of alcohol. And for that new category of individuals, we are terming that MET-ALD, which is short for metabolic with alcohol-associated liver disease. If you have any questions at all that are remaining, please do head to our website at www.liverfoundation.org or give us a call on our helpline at 1-800-GO-LIVER.